Hey guys, this is Psychotic PC Gamer, and um, I'd like to apologise really for the amount of time it's been since I've uploaded a proper video. Um, basically, my laptop has just been not cooperating. Windows 8.1, I've had to completely wipe my system to put it on because I was having some problems with it. Um, work, you know, schoolwork, all that stuff. You know, I'm going to start getting back into videos again. I know it's been a while. But um, this is a tutorial on PCSX2. And PCSX2 is a PlayStation 2 emulator. Similar to Dolphin. And Dolphin's a Wii emulator and GameCube emulator. But this is going to be a video on how to get the best settings from PCSX2. I did a video on this with Dolphin, but now I'm going to be doing it for PCSX2. This is the only working, legit um, PlayStation 2 emulator out there. Any other ones you see are probably very, very early alphas, so they probably won't work at all, and if they do, like, one frames per second. Or just complete scams, money wasters. So, yeah, um, you'll also need a program called CPU-Z, which I shall get open now for you. Basically, what this does... It allows you to see the specs of your entire computer system. So you'll need this, and you'll need PCSX2. So you can download this. I'll put the link in the description. So just minimise that for now. Um, okay, so the first thing you want to do is go to Config and plug in BIOS Selector. Okay, so here GS is graph is like the graphics. So all of the if you get PCSX2 1.0.0, which I recommend because it's a stable version. Um, so, you notice how it says AVX, SSE2, SSE441, and SSSE3. Or GS and all, you don't want that. So what you want to do, to make to know which one you want to use, look on here, and go to where it says CPU, Instructions. So, as you can see, mine is MMX, which is really old technology. SSE 2.3, SSSE 3.0, SSE 4.1, and SSE 4.2. So obviously, you'll want the highest one possible that your CPU can support. So for me, it's SSE 4.1, which I have checked already. And despite what many people may think, SSE 4.1 is better than SSSE 3. So yeah, keep that. Um, Lily pads, basically, this is just... Can, you can figure you can configure your controls. That's just to your own liking. You can configure the plugin, um, the renderer. Um, if you have like a vet, like a not very good graphics card, like a pretty weak graphics card, choose Direct 3D9. Um, if you have a pretty powerful one, choose Direct 3D10. It's basically whichever one works best for you. I have Direct Direct 3D9. It gives a lot better frames per second. Um, interlacing. Set that to auto. Um, original PS2 resolution. Um, if you check no, you can uh, use a custom resolution um, to render at. But this is pretty, pretty um, severe impact on your frames per second. Um, so just leave that native. Um, texture filtering, you want that half checked, not fully checked. Logarithmic Z, fully checked. Alpha correction, fully checked. Um, you don't want anti-aliasing, because it just looks weird on a PS2. It just looks weird in the console. Um, SPU, this is the sound. Um, so it says interpolation. You can choose the quality of your sound. So you can have the fastest. So it runs fast. It runs pretty well in your system, but it's quite bad quality. Um, Catmull ROM is the highest. PS2-like, but very, very slow. Um... So I would choose Cubic, which is in the middle, artificial highs, or simple OK sounds. We'll keep it on Cubic for now. Um, this is Disable Effects Processing, which skips reverb. I don't like reverb. I think it sounds too tinny. I don't know. I just don't like reverb, so I keep that checked. Use the de-alias filter. I don't know what that means. <laughs> This, this is a lot more complicated program than Dolphin. Um, the module that you use, um, no sound, you don't want that. Um, X Audio 2 is the nicest one, uh, but wait, w direct sound is nice, but 
I don't know, it's just not as, doesn't run as smooth. Wave out's really laggy. Port audio, no, you don't want that, oops, you don't want that. X audio 2 is the fastest and the best, it's the one that's tried and tested the most. You go to configure, you can't. <laughs> anyway, um, synchronizing modes, time stretch, keep it on time stretch. No. Audio expansion modes. Um, keep it to stereo unless you have obviously surround sound, surround 5.1 or surround 7.1 or quadraphonic even. Um, so that's that. This is a lot more complicated than Dolphin is. Um, keep the CD DVD drive as CD C DVD gigahertz. Um, USB driver. That's just the same. You don't really need to change that. Now you go. To Go off that and go to memory cards. Oh no, sorry, you don't. You don't go to memory cards. You go to emulation settings. I clicked on the wrong one then. Um, now, this is the Emotion Engine is the main CPU of the PS2. For those of you who don't know, um, it's the program itself. PCSX2 requires a decent CPU because this program relies a lot, lot more upon the processor than upon the graphics. Um, so you, you need to make sure if you don't have a good graphics card, it won't have as much of an effect as if you have a don't as if you like don't have a very good CPU. So you want recompiler checked because the interpreter for Emotion Engine quite rightly states that it's quite possibly the slowest thing in the universe, which it is. It gives it gives me like five FPS or something. It's really bad. IOP keep keep that to recompiler. That's pretty slow as well. That's just provided for di diagnostic purposes, which f for a normal user you wouldn't really need unless you were like a, I don't know, um, round mode. Keep that as nearest, not chop zero, nearest. Clamping mode. Set that to not. Just keep that as normal. Um, VU. Keep that as micro VU recompiler. That's much improved compatibility. It's recommended. Super VU recompiler. No, that's useful for diagnosing bugs. Don't want that. That's just legacy. Or oh, interpreter, again, is very slow. Slow and not very compatible. You don't want the interpreter at all. That's just no. Okay. So, keep all that the same. That's fine. GS. Disable frame limiting. No, you don't really want to disable frame limiting frame limiting because you can adjust the frame limit to make sure it doesn't go over 100 percent but I doubt it will anyway because it's quite a powerful program it takes a lot of CPU power to run so adjust the frame rate so 100 make sure it doesn't ooh, make sure it doesn't go over 100 percent slow motion adjust so that can be half the speed turbo adjust which can be twice the speed there's buttons for all these in the settings um don't yeah, disable frame skipping, because it says, due to PS2 hardware design, precise frame skipping is impossible. Enabling it will cause severe graphical errors in some games. Um, so you don't want to skip frames, because it just it doesn't look any better. Like, it doesn't really speed, all well, for me anyway, it doesn't really speed up my, um, my emulator. But it just looks really choppy, and I don't like it very much. Um... Set this window to anything you like. This can be any size. This is just the resolution that it outputs at. It's not the rendering resolution, so it won't really have a very big difference um, on your frames on your frames per second. I'm just keeping this as 854 by 480, which is what, which is 16 by 9 480p, which is just basically I'm trying to keep as as true as possible to the original PS2. Um, I don't want to make it look too new, I guess. Um, so, high um, dynamically toggle V-Sync, enables V-Sync when the frame rate is exactly at full speed. Um, is it, so, if it's below, like 60 frames per second, say, it disables V-Sync to avoid like per further performance issues. But if it's at 60 frames per second, um, it enables V-Sync. So you want that checked. But most computers rarely get up to 60, most get up to around 55. So... Even the most powerful computer, because this is a very powerful program. Um, speed hacks. Um, this is probably the most 
effective way of speeding up your emulator. Um, normally, the e emotion engine cycle rate will be at 1, which is the default cycle rate, which closely matches the actual speeds of a real emotion engine. Um, reduces the E cycle rate by about 33%, so about a third. Mild speed up from most games with high compatibility. Um, you want this checked unless you're feeling like a rebel and want that reduces by about 50%, which is a moderate speed up again, but it will cause stuttering audio on many FMVs. So you want that on two, because it's just basically a mild speed up with high combat compatibility. It's a moderate speed up with low compatibility. So I, if I was me, i keep it on two. But feel free to experiment, obviously. This is just what works for me. Um, you can change it for you, but I'm just giving you what I think you should be having. So VU cycle stealing. So th it disables it entirely, um, which is most compatible. So basically, it controls the amount of cycles the VU, the VU steals from the emotion engine. Higher values increase it, and lower light decreases it. Um, so one is lower compatibility, but some speed up for most games. Two is even lower compatibility, but significant speed ups in some games. A maximum usefulness is limited, as this will cause flickering visuals or slowdown in most games. I'd have that at one, because it it has a speed up for most games. Um, enable INTZ spin detection. Is a huge speed up for some games with almost no compatibility side effects. Um, this base, well, it says here this hack works best for games that use the INTC status register to wait for V-Syncs, um, which includes primarily non 3D RPG titles. Games that do not use this method of V-Sync will see little or no speed up from this hack. So, unless you're playing like side scrolling RPGs, you won't really see much of a difference, but I just leave it checked anyway. Um, enable weight loop detection. This just um, I don't know what that means because address not x something. Oh, I don't know. But basically, it just speeds up your game slightly. Um, basically, this one enable fast CD DVD. Um, enables fast disc access and lower loading times, but it's not recommended. Um, so you don't want that checked. Micro VU hacks. Um, the flag hack, um, this update status flags only have blocks which will read them instead of all the time. So good speed up and high compatibility may cause bad graphics, but it's a recommended hack. So obviously the risk of having bad graphics can't be too high. Um, multi-threaded micro VU, good speed up and high compatibility may cause hanging. Recommended if you have a tri-core or quad-core system, or even more, an octa-core system, if, you lo if you're so lucky. It's only a dual-core, but you won't dwell on that. Um, I've only got a dual-core, so I leave that unchecked, because I only have, as you can see, the CPU Z. If it decides to load at some point... Ah, oh, piss off, Avast, don't want you. As you can see, it's only a dual core. It's an i3. Mm, that's got a low clock speed as well, so not that good. Game fixes. Um, you don't want to really enable these unless you're having severe issues. This is sort of like a last resort. So you can all of these. It sort of, it tells you what game it's for, um, and it just tells you what the hack does. But I wouldn't bother with these unless you feel there's a reason to do it. Um, so apply, and then OK. And um, that's it for now. Um, I'm just going to boot into the BIOS, basically to show you that I'm getting good frames per second. So if I boot into the BIOS here, um, OK. Just load this. Yeah, so I'm in the BIOS. So I can skip through it and everything. You see at the top, because it's PAL, exactly 50 frames per second. So yeah, this has been Psychologic PC Gamer. Um, I hope you liked this tutorial. And once again, I do apologise for not having any videos put out recently.